uh, so in this video um, I'm going to um, show you the idea behind arc length and we're going to also derive the arc length formula and we're going to use uh, both of these visuals but let's start with the visual on the right so as you can see I have divided the segment from x equals a to x equals b along the x-axis into um, n equal uh, sub intervals and um, let's call them each delta x so that way we have a generic um, delta x equaling um, x of i uh, minus x of i minus 1 uh, for um, i equals 1 to n yeah okay cool 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 and notice that each xi has a corresponding pi yeah and and pi is just a point on the actual uh, curve and what we're trying to do basically is we're trying to estimate the length of the arc which is the length of the curve uh, from p0 here to pn and right now the best that we could do is using these secant lines right like using their length and then adding them up and saying hey this is a very good approximation and that's true but that approximation gets better and better as n grows so if we send n to infinity we'll actually in theory match the exact length of this arc right from p p0 to pn and that's the idea the idea is that we're going to generically define the length of one of these so that that definition applies to all of them and then hopefully you know there's some convenience about taking limits and then we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity and get a formula for uh, finding um, uh, the um, arc length from a to b yeah cool 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 all right so you get the picture now um because because um uh, x i minus one and x i don't lend uh, a segment that is easy to draw a right triangle on. I am going to use uh, as our visual for finding uh, the length of a generic segment. I'm going to use uh, x one and x two. So right there. So there. If you focus on this segment connecting p one and what would be p two, right, right here, right. This would be p two. Okay. So if you look at that. Uh, then first you notice that uh, I'll keep that I guess um, p2 is an, another name for it first you notice that like this segment here is the hypotenuse of a right triangle whose two legs are uh, the uh, blue dotted um, segments here so let's say that this one is a right the vertical distance of the triangle is a oh, well I'll draw an arrow out of it let's say that that's a and then th this is b and that this is C, the hypotenuse. Clearly, the hypotenuse is uh, the length of the segment that we want. Now, we know from Pythagorean theorem that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Um, and so we know that C, the length of the segment we want, is just the square root of A squared plus B squared. Cool. So all we need to find a generic expression for C, which is the length of the segment from P1 to P2, is uh, to figure out what A and B are. But we don't even want to just do it for P1 to P2. We want to do it uh, for PI to PI minus 1, or rather from PI minus 1 to PI, right? So we want the more general um, version of um, the length of one of these segments. Okay, cool. It looks like it's going to be still, um, even in the general case, um, it's going to mimic what, would it, what it would be uh, between P1 and P2, and that is that it's going to be, well, first, um, a squared. a squared is the difference between the y values at xi and at xi minus 1. So that is a squared is going to be f of um, xi minus f of xi, uh, min xi minus 1. That's a subscript. <laughs> okay. Um, and a squared. Notice that this quantity here, I'll, I'll circle it in uh, green, notice that this quantity here, it's possible for it to be negative, such as the case here, right? Um, like, yeah, such x2 has a lower value than x1, at, at the y value. Um, and I didn't write f of x here, but it, you should know that our curve I'm, I'm referring to is f of x. Yeah, so it's clear that f of x2 is uh, smaller than f of x1 but it doesn't matter because we square this quantity so uh, in the end it doesn't matter I need to get rid of that okay um, so 
we're squaring it, so it doesn't matter. Cool. All right, and then of course uh, we have plus uh, b squared, and what is b? Uh, plus b squared, and uh, b in our situation is that length there, and that's the difference uh, between x1 and x2, or between xi and xi minus 1, but that, that's right there, and that's delta x, so we've got delta x squared. Now, to further simplify this expression for the length of a generic segment, we need to um, enlist the help of this visual and the mean value theorem. Remember, the mean value theorem said that if this is like xi minus 1, and this is xi, and so then this is... Um, pi minus 1 and this is pi. The mean value theorem said that the slope of the segment uh, from pi minus 1 to pi is equal to um, it's equal to the slope of this tangent line for some x uh, between xi minus 1 and xi. Let's say that this is just some x right there. And, and so the mean value theorem said that like f prime of x, which is the slope of the tangent line, equaled uh, the average slope of, of uh, the slope of that secant line, which is, which is um, f of xi um, minus f of xi minus 1 O divided by um, xi minus xi minus 1, and so that's just delta x. So divided by delta x, nice. And, um, and now you see where... Um, like we're going to find some conveniences because what we're going to do is take this, multiply both sides by delta x and write that f prime of x times delta x is equal to f of xi minus f of xi minus 1. And in doing this, we see that this is exactly that and we can replace it with this cool 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 that's some convenience all right so here's what we're gonna do then and here's what we're saying we're saying that now we can write pi minus one pi segment length as root um and it's root, and then it's um, right there. And that's the same as that, as I explained. So that's f prime of x delta x squared plus delta x squared. But wait, there's some convenience there. We could write instead squared delta x squared plus delta x squared. There's even more convenience, which is that we could write instead plus 1 times delta x squared, right? But more convenience, which is we can use the square root rules and say that we could write instead, we could write instead f prime of x squared plus 1 and then trim this and take instead of a delta x squared inside we can take a delta x outside of the square root there we are cool all right um we're approaching the finishing line which is this well notice that uh this here even though we simplified tremendously um wait wait this here which is like just a simplified version of that is just the uh, length of one generic segment we want to then add them but the cool thing is that this defines the length of any generic segment um, connecting any two uh, consecutive x's okay so all we need to do is throw a sigma in front of it and then add um, right uh, from i equals one um, to n. So we go i, there's our sigma, right? i equals 1 to n. 
and now we've got ourselves um, the length, the approximate length of our um, arc from P0 to uh, Pn, right? Okay, so let's say that this is L, which is uh, the arc length. The only thing left to do is what I said at the start, which is take the limit as n goes to infinity. That way, like we're uh, picking um, such fine uh, segments that it actually matches uh, the uh, length of the arc. So I'm saying what we need to do is write lim as n goes to infinity. And then of this, and then certain things will have to happen. As, as soon as I write the limit, uh, which is, um, which is the following, which is one delta x will no longer be discrete; it will be continuous, right? Um, and so then, instead of delta x, we go to uh, instead of delta x, we go to dx, and then like sigma will also not be dis discrete and it will be continuous. So we go the integral from a to b. So once the limit is evaluated, we'll have the integral from a to b, and then s same stuff inside the square root. So square root of, and then um, I'll just write uh, using the commutative property of addition. One second, uh, one plus um, f prime of x um, squared. And then as I said, delta x changes to continuous, so it'll turn into a dx, and that is it. So um, if your function is y equals, and I'll write in blue, but if your function is y equals f of x, then you'll see this formula often uh, with uh, this f of x right here replaced by dy dx, and that makes sense. Uh, and if your function is x equals f of y, then um, you'll see a dx dy right there and a dy right there. But otherwise, um, you know, it's the same thing, and the formula is the same, even if you see a slightly altered version uh, than what you see here. But uh, as this is example zero, I've talked in length about the concept and the idea behind arc length and deriving the formula. And in uh, the next couple of examples, at least two more, I'll show you how to actually um, solve problems, and I'll give you specific examples of how to apply this formula. All right, cool. Um, take care. Keep watching.